Welcome back as we continue our series highlighting some of Los Angeles' most iconic destinations. Today, we will be exploring the Griffith Observatory. Located atop Mount Hollywood in Los Angeles, the Griffith Observatory is a portal into the universe. This architectural gem, dating back to 1935, is named after the visionary Griffith J. Griffith. From thrilling planetarium shows to powerful telescopes, it's a place where science sparks imagination. Well then, let's begin our tour. As you approach the Griffith Observatory, the first thing that'll catch your eye is the magnificent Astronomer's Monument. This installation is a tribute to some of history's greatest astronomers, including Hipparchus, a Greek astronomer who lived in the 2nd century BC and made pioneering contributions that laid the foundation for the study of celestial objects and their movements. Copernicus, a Polish mathematician and astronomer who lived during the Renaissance period, best known for his revolutionary idea that fundamentally reshaped our understanding of the cosmos. Galileo, a polymath who made profound contributions to physics, astronomy, mathematics, and the scientific method. Kepler, a German mathematician, astronomer, and key figure in the scientific revolution, renowned for his groundbreaking laws of planetary motion. Newton, whose work in physics, mathematics, and astronomy laid the foundation for modern science and had a profound impact on our understanding of the universe. And Herschel, best known for his groundbreaking contributions to the study of the universe. He is particularly celebrated for being one of the earliest astronomers to use powerful telescopes to explore the cosmos. But that's not all. If you cast your gaze upwards at the peak of the monument, you'll discover the stellar centerpiece, the armillary sphere. This remarkable astronomical instrument is composed of rings that represent celestial latitude, longitude, and the ecliptic, in simpler terms, before the invention of the telescope, this sphere was the main tool used by astronomers to precisely pinpoint the position of stars, planets, and other celestial wonders in the night sky. Right before the entrance, you'll see a two-scale solar system model spread across the lawn surrounding the observatory. Keep an eye out for the bronze plaques and lines which marks the orbit of the planets. Right at the center is the Sun, a humble half-inch representation. Each step taken to move away from the sun represents a significant 20 million miles in space. It's a simple yet powerful reminder of the vastness of our actual solar system, which is in reality 110 times larger than this model. Close by, you'll find the fascinating equatorial sundial, a remarkable timekeeping device. Its precisely etched ring allows you to trace shadow's movement with great precision. Most importantly, it tells time by tracking the sun's path. There are clamps that can be readily adjusted when daylight saving time changes occur. At its core, a sturdy wire acts like a compass needle, aligning perfectly with Earth's axis, pointing north to south. It also forms a 34-degree angle with the horizon, matching the latitude of Los Angeles. This sun deal doesn't just count minutes, it tunes us into the natural rhythm of our world. Let's enter the observatory now, just before the crowds pour in. Here, within the W.M. Keck Foundation's central rotunda, we encounter two iconic exhibits, the Hugo Ballin murals and the Foucault pendulum. High above lies the observatory's greatest artistic treasure, the Ballin murals. These murals tell a captivating tale fusing classical celestial mythology and the scientific progress of mankind. Now, how do you suppose our ancestors deciphered the night sky without so much as a telescope? All throughout ancient history, it is apparent that myths were used commonly to make sense of the cosmos. Hugo Ballin masterfully captures this celestial narrative on the ceiling, where Atlas bears the most central sphere housing the zodiac signs. The radiant Pleiades, a cluster of seven sister stars, followed by Jupiter wielding his mighty thunderbolt. Following this, Venus gracefully leads the way, ushering in the four seasons. Afterwards lies Saturn and Mercury chasing Argos. An observer next to a woman holding the star of Bethlehem, the mural continues on to the moon and a comet. Let's shift our focus to the eight-panel murals known as the Advancement of Science, also by Hugo Ballin. 
Each of these panels focuses on a specific area of scientific advancement. The panels cover topics such as astronomy, aeronautics, navigation, engineering, metallurgy and electricity, time, geology and biology, and mathematics and physics. In the astronomy panel, we see Arzakel, a prominent astronomer with his Tolden table that allows for the calculation of the positions of the planets at any time, based on observations. Then there's John of Holywood, who's hard at work on a book that was the beginner's guide to astronomy back in the day, a must-read for aspiring stargazers. And of course, we can't forget about Copernicus, the trailblazer who swapped Earth for the Sun as the center of our solar system, stands alongside Galileo, whose telescope is overshadowed by a sleek, modern counterpart. In the aeronautics panel, we meet Archidas of Tarentum flying a wooden pigeon referencing his creation of a self-propelled bird-shaped device known as the Pigeon. Then, we have Roger Bacon and his conceptualized flying machine, the Floating Sphere, Francesco Delana with a flying boat model, and Leonardo da Vinci, who needs no introduction. Lastly, Besnier gliding successfully in 1678 with an apparatus he built that mimicked the beating of a bird's wing. For navigation, on the left, a figure that symbolizes the wind holds a sundial and compass. Calm, another symbolic figure is shown to the right, holding a modern sextant. A diagram of the moon's orbit is around the two figures. And up top, there's an astrolabe, one of the earliest tools of astronomy. As for the engineering panel, we're in for a journey through the ages. There's an ancient Egyptian that stands before a pyramid, a true marvel of ancient engineering that still leaves us in awe. If you look closely at the figure in the middle, you might notice that it is in fact two figures, locked in a struggle. This struggle represents the powerful forces within the Earth that engineers must confront, especially when it comes to the ever-present challenge of earthquakes. And then, we fast forward to modern times. Here, we've got a surveyor quietly ensuring precision in every measurement, while the colossal Hoover Dam stands tall, a symbol of modern engineering excellence. In the metallurgy and electricity panel, we've got some fascinating characters. First up, there's St. Florian, the patron for metallurgists who is seen pouring water over fire right next to a steel-making converter. And do you know what this chitin key symbolizes? Benjamin Franklin's Eureka, moment when he uncovered the electrifying secrets of lightning. Finally, there's German scientist Otto von Gerich holding a device that is capable of creating electricity just through friction. In the time panel, there's a mix of intriguing stories. Look over to the Aztec calendar stone. At the heart of the stone, you'll find the face of the sun god Tonish. In Aztec cosmology, Tonish was considered the ruler of the fifth sun. Here is Emperor Yao of China. He is watching the execution of magicians who failed to prevent a solar eclipse. This story reflects how people in history went to great lengths to prevent what they believed were natural disasters, like the eclipse. And on the right, we've got Luff Beg, a renowned 15th century astronomer and mathematician who now has a crater named after him on the moon's surface. In the geology and biology panel, there's an old man who's holding a card showcasing mineral crystals symbolizing geology. In the middle of the panel, there's a biologist studying life with a chicken embryo, plant and crab through a microscope. Now, for the last man, who symbolizes paleontology showing off a saber-toothed cat skull with a fish skeleton below. The last panel is all about math and physics. There's a Greek geometer whose work is widely influenced by the Egyptians, as shown through the presence of the god Thoth in the background. An Arab is featured next, signifying his culture's contributions to mathematics. And there's a seated man gazing into a mysterious cloud, representing physics. Can you guess who the final figure is? He is the most mentioned man when talking about the subject of physics. You've guessed correctly. It is none other than Sir Isaac Newton, the genius who invented calculus. Newton is seen chatting with some enthusiastic students on the right. It's like a grand gathering of brilliant minds in this panel. These murals celebrate the progress of human knowledge and achievement in various scientific fields. 
Capturing the entirety of human progress into these panels is quite a challenge, and keep in mind that these murals were painted in 1934, so any subsequent discoveries were not included. Now, let's explore the next wonder in the rotunda, the Foucault Pendulum, a timeless favorite. It is a hefty 240-pound bronze ball gently swinging on a 40-foot cable. It always seems to move in the same direction, but it's the Earth that's turning. You may be wondering, how does all of this work? Well, this pendulum is hung on a special ceiling mount that stays put while the observatory spins with Earth's rotation. A tiny magnet at the bearing gives it a nudge to keep it moving. Throughout the day, the pendulum gracefully knocks over little pegs placed in its path, showing us the Earth's rotation in the most fascinating manner. Time to enter the first hall of the observatory, the Wilder Hall of the Eye. Here, we delve into the fascinating journey of human sky gazing and the tools that have fueled our exploration. On your right, there's a small hallway that leads to the lower level of the observatory. This hallway features three light boxes that illustrate the wonder of human exploration of the moon. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, NASA achieved President Kennedy's daring goal, sending astronauts to the moon and safely bringing them back to Earth. During these missions, 12 remarkable individuals had the extraordinary experience of walking on the lunar surface, where they collected over 800 pounds of precious moon rocks. The breathtaking photographs taken by these astronauts vividly document this historic achievement. One iconic moment in space history took place on June 3, 1965, during the Gemini 4 mission when Edward H. E. White II became the first American to step out into the cosmic abyss 100 miles above our planet. Using a small handheld rocket, White gracefully maneuvered during his 21-minute spacewalk. A 23-foot tether wrapped in gold ensured he stayed connected, providing oxygen and communication. In the reflection of his gold visor, you can catch a glimpse of his capsule. Fast forward to December 24, 1968, when the Apollo 8 crew became the first humans to orbit the moon. They captured an awe-inspiring image of Earth rising above the lunar horizon offering a breathtaking view of our home planet. And on July 20, 1969, Buzz Aldrin stood amidst the lunar landscape at Tranquility Base during the first human landing on the moon. If you look closely at Aldrin's gold visor, you can see Neil Armstrong, the mission's photographer, and the lunar module eagle are all reflected. Here we have the room that houses the camera obscura, a fascinating optical device that may seem like magic but is elegantly simple. It works by projecting an image of the outside world into a darkened room through a tiny pinhole. The Griffith Observatory's camera obscura, perched on the roof, adds a touch of ingenuity by using mirrors and a rotating turret to create the reflected image you see here. What's fantastic is that anyone can construct a camera obscura. Artists use them for tracing projected images, and in the past, astronomers relied on them for observing the sun. This tool harnesses the power of mirrors and lenses to focus light onto a flat surface, and the Griffith Observatory's updated version is more expensive than the previous exhibit. It features a periscope-like tube on the eastern side of the observatory's roof, which reflects captivating images onto the camera obscura table. As the tube gracefully revolves, it treats visitors to breathtaking vistas of Los Angeles, serving as a vivid reminder that they stand at the intersection of Earth and sky. As you exit the camera obscura room, you should immediately notice the Tesla coil, an engaging invention. It's able to take ordinary low-voltage alternating current electricity and transform it into high voltage while increasing the frequency. Imagine you have regular electricity the kind that powers your lights and gadgets at home. Now the Tesla coil takes that ordinary electricity and increases the voltage. Once it has this supercharged electricity, it releases it into the air in rapid burst. This creates those spectacular sparks and lightning like flashes you see in a Tesla coil show. The genius behind its name, Nikolai Tesla, showcased the first model in 1891. His dream was to send electricity sailing through the air wirelessly. However, due to their high voltage and high energy consumption, it is currently used for entertainment and educational purposes. Observatory staff demonstrate the Tesla coil several times each day, and the six-minute presentation is free. Check out the official observatory site for exact times. 
Apart from the camera obscura and the Tesla coil, the Wilder Hall hosts four other exhibits. On the right is the Beyond the Visible panel, which highlights the limitations of our human vision and stresses the significance of using specialized tools to study the universe and wavelengths of light that our eyes cannot detect. In the cosmic quest for understanding, we first turn our gaze toward radio waves. These waves allow us to uncover secrets hidden at the centers of galaxies, much like the center of our Milky Way. In fact, our galaxy's center is about 26,000 light years away from us, making it hard to study directly. However, we can learn a lot about it through radio waves. So, do you think we need a space-based observatory or an Earth-based one to capture radio waves? Radio waves have the longest wavelengths in the light spectrum, and they can travel all the way to Earth's surface, where we can detect them using Earth-based radio telescope. When we observe familiar galaxies such as M81 in the night sky using radio waves, it's like seeing them in a whole new way. This unique perspective helps us identify hydrogen clouds, a crucial ingredient for creating new stars. Those colorful patches we see they indicate places where cold hydrogen gas is abundant, eventually becoming dense areas where stars are born. Now, there's another type of light that reveals our galaxy differently. It transforms the galaxy into a sort of hazy bar of light, but in reality, it's heat radiating from warm dust clouds. This heat shows up as microwave radiation, but there's more to it. As we venture beyond our galaxy, we encounter a cosmic background glow a whisper from the ancient Big Bang that gave birth to our universe. Microwaves play a crucial role in helping us understand the universe's early history, dating back to over 13 billion years. However, most microwave light from space easily passes through Earth's atmosphere, which is why space-based observatories are used to capture it. Instruments like the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe allow for the study of the temperature variations within this radiation, which, thanks to the force of gravity, eventually led to the formation of the galaxy clusters we see today. Did you know that everything in the universe gives off heat? It is what we detect as infrared light. Using infrared light, we can peek into secret star nurseries where new stars are born and unveil the hidden cores of galaxies. Now, here's the interesting bit. Our atmosphere tends to absorb infrared, making it tricky to observe from the ground. That's why we rely on special spacecraft to capture it. That's where the Spitzer Space Telescope comes in. Through its infrared capabilities, the Spitzer Space Telescope provided a closer look at NGC 1333, revealing the intricate process of newborn stars, similar to our sun, shaping their birth nebula. It's like observing the cosmic artists at work, crafting something extraordinary in the vast canvas of the universe. Look up at the night sky, and you'll see millions of stars outlined in the shape of our Milky Way galaxy. But there's more to it than meets the eye. Even within the realm of visible light, there are hidden corners concealed by veils of cosmic dust. Behind this shroud lies the heart of our galaxy where a supermassive black hole resides, surrounded by a blazing ring of gas and brilliant star clusters. The light we see is just a tiny portion of the cosmic spectrum. Most of the telescopes here on Earth focus on this visible light. However, we also utilize space-based observatories like the Hubble Space Telescope to rise above the Earth's atmosphere, which often gets in the way. Now, Imagine staring into the depths of space for 10 consecutive days. That's exactly what the Hubble Space Telescope did in 1996, capturing an astonishing image known as the Hubble Deep Field. In this image, you'll find a dazzling array of galaxies, some so distant that they appear as they did when the universe itself was just a billion years old. When it comes to peering into the center of our galaxy in ultraviolet light, things get a bit dim. So far, we know it's active with stars, superheated gases, and even a black hole. But there's also dense clouds of cosmic dust soaking up the ultraviolet light they produce. Now, for the rest of the ultraviolet cosmos, it's a bit easier to spot. But we have to enlist the help of telescopes that orbit above our protective atmospheric shield. Our eyes might be clueless when it comes to spotting ultraviolet light, but we sure feel its effects when sunlight burns our skin. Ultraviolet light is no joke. It can be quite harmful to living cell. Fortunately, Earth's atmosphere absorbs and blocks most of this energetic radiation, 
which is why we need a space-based telescope, once again, to see and study ultraviolet light. Star births are like a cosmic fireworks show. It throws out massive amounts of ultraviolet radiation. Take a look at the Andromeda galaxy in the image here. Those vibrant blue patches? Those are stellar nurseries where stars are being born. Meanwhile, the yellows and oranges in the central bulge are inhabited by old, cool stars. And those little red dots, well, those are the stars from our own Milky Way. In the grand theater of the universe, high-energy events bring a shower of X-rays. Whether it's a feisty solar flare, a comet tangling with the solar wind, the radiant birth of a star, the shockwave of a supernova, or a cosmic snack being devoured by a black hole, they all are activities that emit heaps of X-ray. And guess what? The core of our very own Milky Way galaxy is no exception. It's a bustling hub of activity with its central black hole producing X-ray. These rays are high energy and have short wavelengths. They can easily pass through our bodies, which is why we use them for medical scans. But here's the catch. Our earthly atmosphere isn't a fan of X-rays either, so they're almost entirely blocked out. That's why spacecraft are essential for studying cosmic X-rays. When astronomers turn their gaze toward galaxies in turmoil, they're in for a captivating show. Take Centaurus A, for example. When the Chandra X-ray Observatory took a closer look, it found some thrilling evidence. There's a colossal jet spewing out material from the galactic core, plus two arcs of X-ray emitting gas. This intriguing spectacle suggests that a supermassive black hole is stirring things up at the core of the galaxy. When it comes to energy levels in the universe, gamma rays take the top. Blazing, hot events like galaxy collisions or supernova explosions unleash massive bursts of gamma rays. Even at the heart of our very own Milky Way galaxy, you'll find a powerhouse of gamma ray action. Here, the supermassive black hole wields its gravitational pull, heating up nearby gas. Gamma rays pack the most energy and have the tiniest wavelengths of all forms of light in the electromagnetic spectrum. These ultra-energetic events generate gamma rays, but once again, our atmosphere absorbs incoming gamma rays. So we need space-based observatories to catch these elusive rays. Back in 1993, the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory witnessed the Super Bowl burst. A colossal flood of gamma rays bursting from a mysterious celestial object. Imagine these bursts as cosmic fireworks that can appear anywhere in the sky, dazzling us with their brilliance before vanishing into the cosmic abyss. Some of these gamma ray shows might be triggered by epic collisions between black holes or the dramatic merger of a neutron star and a black hole. As we come to the end of this panel, I want to acknowledge that we've covered a lot of fascinating information in a short time. If you want to dive deeper into any topic or have questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I hope you now see how important special tools and telescopes help us learn about space and recognize the protective shield our atmosphere provides. Stay tuned for part two of our Griffith Observatory Tour, where we'll continue our journey through the Hall of the Eye and venture into the Hall of the Sky. Don't forget to show your support by liking, subscribing, and dropping a comment. Tell us where you'd like to explore next on our journey.